This is Jason Garber. I met Jason on July 22nd of last year when I received a call of a possible suicidal subject sitting on the cord near mid-span. I responded, and when I arrived, I observed Jason speaking to a Golden Gate Bridge officer. Jason was just 32 years old and had flown out here from New Jersey. As a matter of fact, he had flown out here on two other occasions from New Jersey to attempt suicide on this bridge. After about an hour of speaking with Jason, he asked us if we knew the story of Pandora's box. Recalling your Greek mythology, Zeus created Pandora and sent her down to Earth with a box and told her never, ever open that box. One day, curiosity got the better of Pandora, and she did open the box. Out flew plagues, sorrows, and all sorts of evils against man. The only good thing in the box was hope. Jason then asked us, what happens when you open the box and hope isn't there? He paused a few moments, leaned to his right, and was gone. Baba? Babubu? Goo goo gaga? Can you say bo bo? Go go. Go go. Anyway, many years ago, about five, six years ago, I made my channel black and white out of respect for a one year old baby who was uh, very badly injured when the SWAT team. Um, threw a flash grenade into his cot without checking who was in the residence. Turns out, this is in America, they were doing a drug raid. Turns out, it was the wrong house, and uh, they tried to justify almost killing a one-year-old baby by saying, oh, but the dad had a small quantity of cannabis on him. Marijuana, marijuana, they call it in America. I'm just playing around with the filter, so this video, I just, you've seen a couple of clips I've just played, but I think every single human being on Earth has a tipping point where all their hardness, the entire shell, all the defenses break down. Sometimes people have a mystical experience, they see something incredible. Other people just need a good cry. Other people just need the right formula, the right equations of honesty and emotive subjects. Could you stop grunting for a second, Isaac? Good baby. They just need the right thing. So as part of my public service, if you guys are funding me, which some of you are, and thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, it's amazing. I hope this works, and it will if we do it properly. Part of my public service is to, I guess, try and break the shells that many of you as a defense mechanism have set up to try and live in modern clown world. None of us were born here to live in the anti-fractal, jagged, concrete edges of modern life. None of you were here to um, work in an office, doing a job you hate, shuffling admin, opening PowerPoint, having meetings with the boss. The concept of a boss is ridiculous. I hope part of my videos as well is to show you that it's so easy to hack everyday social interactions by simply showing that you're you are the alpha and the omega. You are the be-all and the end-all. I strongly believe in... I love my German philosophers. I really do. Today's one I'm going to mention is Immanuel Kant. You know, Kantian... Kant, I'll, I'll, I'll just describe it very quickly. Immanuel Kant came up with a concept in moral philosophy called the categorical imperative. The imperative to rule all imperatives. And it goes as thus. In order to be moral or correct under God or under any system of morality, you have to treat other human beings and indeed yourself as an end in itself, as the Alpha and the Omega, never as a means, never as cattle, never as grazers or consumers or people you need to manipulate through advertising or through the news to get young men to go join the army. You must treat every human being as an end in themselves, as if you are actually speaking to the only man on earth and 
the only sentience, like this whole mono sentience thing, obviously is a, a way to describe God. So what I'm trying to say is you have to actually treat everyone. It's the golden rule. Every religion has it. Treat others as you'd like to be treated yourself. If you're healthy, you want to get treated as if you're an individual. You want to get treated as if you matter, as if your life matters, as if your children matter. I was getting a coffee this morning. A lot of cafes are open. They had the COVID-19 track and trace form. I'd already bought my breakfast, my coffee. And uh, she's like, oh, you have to, to fill this in. It's only name, address, phone number and sign it. I said, no, no, my, this is my exact energy. No, 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 I'm, I don't. I don't think I should. She goes, well, you can't, you can't stay in the cafe. I said, come on now. You can't force me. It's not the law. In those exact words, that exact tone. She goes, I I'll speak to the manager. She comes back 15 seconds later. She goes, it's fine. You can, you can stay and enjoy your coffee. So again, it's just no one is saying signing a contract, a track and trace COVID-19 form is the same as being put in a gulag and tortured. But it's a tiny increment. You know, if life is a balance... You have to balance your health and safety, health and safety, with your personal sovereignty, with the categorical imperative that Immanuel Kant. Now, to, before I play the next clips, which I hope move you to hear, the baby is going nuts. What are you doing? Look, no, hey, no head banging in the car. Not when I'm shooting a video, no head banging. So I'm going to wrap this up, but I hope you enjoy these clips. I find them in the randomest places. So without further ado, Thank you for watching. It's goodbye from Charlie and Isaac. The lead plane has already punched the pickle switch and will turn loose canisters of napalm. Hal was trying to stop the second guy from dumping his on us. But unfortunately for two or three engineer demolition guys. They were right in the path. And in that flame, I could see these two men dancing and screaming. And someone yelled, get this man's feet. And I reached down and picked him up, and uh, his boots crumbled. The flesh on his ankles just peeled off. I could feel the ankle bone in the palm of my hands. Uh, and we carried him over to where the wounded were was a young specialist uh, named Jim Nakayama out of uh, Rigby, Idaho. Married. Wife had a baby that week. He died two days later. That boy is my nightmare. <sighs> you can keep your head when all about you losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for the doubting too or being lied about. Don't deal in lies. Or being hated. Don't give way to hating. And yet, don't look too good and talk too wise. If you can dream, but not make dreams your master. If you can think, but not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph hmm, and disaster, and you just treat these two imposters just the same, 
or bear to hear the truth that you've spoken. Twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools. Or watch the things that you've given your life to broken. And stoop and build them up again with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings, huh? And risk it in one turn of pitch and toss and lose. Start again at your beginnings. Never breathe the word about your loss. If you can force your heart and your nerve and your sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, but never lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distant run. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it, which is more. You're going to be a man, my son. <laughs>